Aloha Awina La, Pauhana. I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland. Live streamed Fridays at 3 p.m. Hawaiian Standard Time and available 24 7 thereafter on YouTube and as a podcast from Think Tech Hawaii Radio. Play Builders of Hawaii Theater Company is a grassroots community collaborative theater nonprofit. Along with the Foster Care Training Committee, they have just debuted Dragonfly. Presented as a musical, Dragonfly follows characters based on two very real individuals, Arthur and Aline Usugi, who have fostered over 300 children in their Waianae home, as well as story circles and interviews with former foster youth, therapists, and social workers. Dragonfly will be performed free this Sunday, April 3rd, 30th, 6.30 p.m. at Calvary by the Sea Lutheran Church in Ainahaina and next weekend at other venues. With me today are Terry Madden, the manage, Managing Director and Founder of Play Builders of Hawaii, as well as the Program Organizer and Playwright of Dragonfly. Becky McGarvey, the Choreographer, Cast Member, and um, um, Dancer. <laughs> um, and Apu Turano, who is a former foster youth who is both cast member and songwriter for Dragonfly. So, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, thank you. Thank we you. appreciate it so much. I can't wait to see it. But um, tell us how this kind of came together, Terry. How it came together. Well, our mission is to gather and share real stories that resonate with, empower, and connect individuals within the many rich and diverse communities here in Hawaii. We're six years old. And we have done communities uh, geographic like Chinatown, Waipahu, Wahiwa, as well as with uh, special groups like Hawaii's Homeless, LGBT, and now foster, foster care. We did two years ago a play in um, Waipahu um, called uh, The Waipahu Project. It was written by a student. And uh, I, we met so many wonderful people. And some of those people happened to have connections with the foster care community. So they saw what we were doing, and uh, Vernon Viernes from Queen Lilio Kalani Children's Center, and Alan Castello from, um, uh, it was Partners in Development, said, you know, this would really be good for the foster care community. And actually, I've got to go back even further, because the initial spark of the idea actually came from Apu who was working on some legislation with High Hopes. High Hopes. With High Hopes. And he, he was telling me about it, and I thought, we really should. So it just, everything just came together, confirmed it, and we moved forward from there. And we've been working on it for two years now. Wow. So it's a musical, although you're not calling it a musical. Right. That, it was never meant to be a musical. The idea that we could even do a musical is... I couldn't write a song if my life depended on it, but it, we would meet once a week at the Arts at Mark's Garage, and we would work on our craft of acting and singing and dance. And um, who's the we in this case? It's, our, it's myself with members of our um, ensemble, and Apu and Becky are part of that, but we also invited former foster youth to join us. And they would share their stories with us. And we also would invite people from um, like therapists and social workers to join us just once a week. It was very simple. We met for a few hours. And we found we really enjoyed it. So it, it happened from a very organic way. And I, I just one day in circles said, you know, something tells me this should be a musical. But I can't write music. Can anybody here write music? And like three forums, are, yeah, um, I can do that. And so that's what they did. Wow. Yeah. Um, very cool. Um, so can I hear a little bit of your story, Becky McGarvey? Um, in regards with Play Builder? Sure. Just take um, it. How did you get involved? Why are you doing this? <laughs> Um, I'm not a former foster youth, but um, when we started interviewing people, I learned really quickly that um, we have a lot in common. Um, I came from kind of a poor area, um, so that was really interesting and connecting with people through these stories and these similarities. And I also kind of, with Terry, feel that there's a strong need for this play to like um, get those stories out there. We learned through this process a lot of people 
are not encouraged to share their stories, especially if it's um, sad or scary. Um, and we just had one performance so far, but the people who came to that, the feedback's been amazing. Yeah, it was an incredible review. Oh. I, I really am so excited. So um, when, when this is up, we'll put the schedule of the other performances. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <clears throat> so you're having four performances overall? No, we're having 13 performances oh, yay, overall. Yay. So we've, we're doing these free performances in conjunction uh, with the Foster Care Training Committee with the idea that if people hear these stories, they'll want to help. And uh, so it's part of recruiting um, resource caregivers and adoptive homes for these kids that are in need. At any given time, uh, there's over 700 kids just on Oahu who are living in sometimes overcrowded uh, emergency shelters. And that's not even counting the outer islands. And if we count them, it's over a thousand. So we, ju we just thought this is the best way um, to, um, to bring it to people. And we hope that they're moved. Uh, when we did our uh, last performance at the Mission uh, Memorial Auditorium, uh, I think there was about 150 people there. Out of that, we, we sent out uh, surveys. Out of that, we got maybe 40 back, which is actually pretty good. Yeah. And then from that 40, there were 10 people that said that they wanted more information about how to help. Oh, that's fabulous. That's what it really means to be working in a community. And I'm a firm believer in the creative process really being <laughs> transformative. So it's really great. <laughs> so Apu, how did you join this merry band? I started off with um, Houseless in Paradise. Uh, Terry was working with another man who I volunteered with at IHS, um, November Morris. And he brought me the attention to Terry. And she said, you want to work with this project? So I played a homeless man in there. Um, then several months later, there was uh, other projects, but I ended up uh, having, you know, my own life situations had occurred. But she came, it was one night it in Waikiki. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta share this story because I was listening to music at um, the Waikiki, I forget what hotel it was, but I was just, you know, having my own time, relaxing. And then out of nowhere, Terry Madden and her family and friends my niece. yeah, were walking on the, the beach walk. And she approached me and said, is that you, Apu? And I'm like, yeah, what are you doing here? Just hanging out, listening to music. How about you come next week? We're having auditions for a uh, play about foster care. And it would be a great opportunity for you to share your story. So that's when the magic began. It was kind of miraculous because he was the first one who brought it to our attention and then just to run into him on the beach like that just <laughs> just That's like yeah best. you're coming yeah <laughs> you're, you're, you're gonna be doing right this thing. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, um, how long, did, you said you've been working on this for two years, that seems like a really long time. Yeah, it is. But you had to do it from... There's nothing the, to begin with. Right. It's an idea. So, we have to raise money. Uh, so, that takes several months of grant writing. And then, we have to gather the stories. When we start off, we have no idea what the play is going to be about. We have no preconceived ideas about who it is we're going to be talking with, or what they have to say. So um, it took a year of, of just doing that. And then over the summer of um, last year, I, we took a break. I took, a, uh, I took the break, really. I wrote the uh, play, but Becky continued meeting with them to do, uh, work with dance. And Apu and Leila uh, used that time to meet to write the music. Well, let's, um, you've uh, sent a little video clip. Let's have a little video clip um, so that the viewers get just a little taste of, of what the show is like, if we can.
That looks like an amazing process. It was. It was pretty intense. And uh, you saw some of the story circles. Sometimes we went outside the Arts at Mark's garage where we were meeting once a week. And we went to like Queen Lilio Kalani Children's Center and held story circles in that instance with um, members of the foster care training committee. Uh, sometimes I went out on my own and interviewed people independently, like um, um, Aline Uesugi, who, by the way, her husband died seven years ago. And so this play is, is written in his honor, as well as her, um, her and the 300 children that they fostered together. Um, how, how many people do you think you interviewed? Just I would say dozens. And, and not all of them, of course, are in the play. Um, but every story that you hear in the play is true. And much of it is verbatim, like when we do the, um, uh, the monologues, especially. Those are verbatim. Um, this, the main story is based on a story, but it's not verbatim. It's like I, I took a creative license with that. And then the, pl the music themselves that they wrote sort of helped as we wove those together, knowing what they had to say also helped a great deal to shape the play. And the, um, um, how, what is the best way for people to find out what's going on about this? By the best way? way is to go to our website, okay. uh, www.playbuilders.org, or to our Facebook page. Um, but yes, we're doing various churches, but we're also uh, starting the 18th to the 27th, uh, Thursdays through Sundays. Uh, we'll be at the Arts at Mark's Garage. Okay, we're going to pause for about a minute and come back and learn some more. Thank you. Aloha, my name is John Waihe'e, and I used to be a part of all the things that you might be angry at. I served in government here and may have made decisions that affects you. So I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to Talk Story with me and some very special guests every other Monday here at Talk Story with John Wahee. Come on in, join us, express your opinion, learn more about your state, and then do something about it. Aloha. Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kawi Lucas, and with me today are three people from the Play Builders of Hawaii Theater Company. And because I can't stand it anymore, I really want to hear them. <laughs> hear some of this um, uh, original music that this part of Dragonfly, their their new production. So let's hear it. So this song is called "Going on Your Way." Um, it's more of a uplifting, you know, for your spirit to be revived and. Hopefully it gives insight to positive energy. And you wrote the song in, as part of this production? Yes. Okay. I have faith you may want to know Faith so strong that it inspires hope. If you believe with this faith of mine, you just come true in a matter of its time. So don't give up, don't fall astray. Just keep on, keep on moving on your way. We could do this in the parking lot. <laughs> I have hope you may want to hear A hope so strong your sorrows disappear If you achieve with this hope of mine The goals you set will appear before your eyes So don't give up, don't fall astray Keep on, keep on moving on your way. We're gonna hit it home now. I have love you may want to see. A love so strong it's living inside of me. If you succeed with this 
love you share You touch your heart one day at a time I swear So don't give up, don't fall astray Just keep on, keep on moving on your way Keep on, keep on moving on your way. Just keep on, keep on moving on your way. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So, Becky, what did you use for your inspiration in the choreography? And I. I because I haven't seen, I have no idea what choreography in the in the in this kind of a show would even mean. Um, well, um, as Terry mentioned earlier, uh, I have a background with uh, imp contact improvisation, ah, a style okay. of modern dance. Um, so the cast choreographed a lot of it. Really, I would give them kind of like uh, constraints, like um, and it has a very modern dance feel. I didn't want it to look like a musical. Okay. You know, so um, there's also something in the play about this um, ritual that the foster kids do when they leave a home. So the circle of light. Yeah, that involves flashlights. So we used flashlights in some of the numbers, which was fun. Um, but yeah, a lot of like um, one of the numbers, I just told them you have to make a pose, and it's all that frustration of, that you're feeling or your character is feeling, and just how does that go into your body? Do that and. You know, they'd have to do it in time with the music, and it just shaped from there. So, some of the strongest moments that she choreographed are the monologues themselves. So it wasn't just choreography with the music, but with the spoken word as well. Okay. Well, I mean, I, we can't divulge the stories, of course, because <laughs> people have to come and see the performances. Um, but um, I'm. This transition from being um, in the foster care system as, as a child and then, you know, transitioning out of it, um, how long has that um, process been for you? How long were you in, uh, in the foster care system? I went into the foster care system when I was actually eighth grade. So I was 11 years old. My father had just passed away. I ran away from my family, um, my biological family. And I ran away to friends, and since then, the friends that I ran away to, um, well, my first foster family didn't really work out well, then I ran away to another friend, and that friend is still in my life to this day, and his family take me as their own, and I'm really glad that because of that experience, even though things were going drastic, it turned out to be a positive ending. So. Yeah, that song is, is about faith, is, is very beautiful and uplifting. And, um, you know, it is kind of scary to even contemplate these stories sometimes, those of us who um, have, know people and know how, how really painful it can be. But it really is that, that spirit of resilience that, um, that, that needs to be spoken about more, or needs to be told more. So, um, Terry, um, this is pr probably a little different than some, some of the other shows in, in that sense. I think it, with everyone that we do, we've gotten a little bit better at it. And this time we took our time with it. Rather than trying to write a play in five months, we, we really took our time. And um, I think that you know, what you're speaking about, how hard, difficult these stories are, they are. But at the same time, you realize how resilient humanity is. And I think the thing that I learned the most is that these foster kids are heroes. Because despite living through sometimes unspeakable hardship at the start of their life, that they keep trying. And these songs that you hear come from former foster youth, and they're beautiful. And the reason why we called the play Dragonfly, the story of a young girl's journey through foster, uh, local girl's journey through foster care, is because that they save themselves. I mean, the system can be there as much as possible, but it's through their learning how to mature and uh, turn inward 
it's their faith. That's why so many have faith, and that's what got them through. Like I'm not, I don't consider myself a particularly religious person, but but hearing about their faith um, uh, built my faith. So it's very inspiring, and um, and, and the dragonfly. That's the symbol um, worldwide of of um, that type of change and that's one of the main songs is change and, and that willingness to change as we learn and we grow yeah that's um kind of how the play formed is we were listening to all these stories and that was kind of something that strung them all together was um you know you hear it and you're like how did they and some of them sometimes they would say i don't know like i don't know how i got through it i just kept going and kept moving Perseverance was something that came up a lot. Yeah. Um, it, if you can recall back to when you were hearing the stories, maybe of the of the professionals and the, uh, uh, are are they s somehow incorporated in the play? Yes, they are. We Looking had, at that side of, of it was interesting. Um, we had um, we have a character by the name of Auntie Faye who plays a social worker, and it, we um, she's able to speak her side of things and as well as the, uh, the therapist um, she goes to a rehab center in, in California so yeah we got those and and what one of the most difficult uh, things for us to address is that things have gotten better within the last um, six months to five years Laws have changed. Things are better for foster kids than they ever have been. But it hasn't had time to really reach the kids as they age out, like Apu's age or, or even younger. So trying to bring that in, how they've changed. And then I realized uh, we can tell people that things have changed, but we can't tell them the results of that change. And I think we also, it's really important to know that if we don't keep stewardship over our kids, you know, it's like one of the people that we interviewed was Abby Sylvester's family. Yeah, uh, and they're friends of ours. Right, and um, she kept talking about how it takes a village and how uh, the church, uh, Calvary by the Sea Lutheran Church, uh, has been instrumental in helping support that family. She has 10 kids all together, seven uh, adopted, uh, two biological, well, I guess three now, three yes. biological <laughs> on the way. So it's 10. I said, how do you do that? And, and she said, it takes a village. And uh, I know that Pastor Tim takes her dinner, takes them dinner once a, a week. And I was like, wow, if we could all be like that with our kids. We have, a, we have about three minutes, so um, I, I'd like you to talk about the, uh, where the um, next performances are and, and perhaps what's, what's in, in your futures. Um, our next performance is Sunday at Calvary by the Sea Lutheran Church, and we're so excited about going there. And then after that, we head out to Wahiawa to Dot's Restaurant, mm -hmm. where we're inviting the whole community to come. All these performances are free. And uh, then um, we are going to be at uh, the Arts at Mark's Garage, and we'll have our final performance. We'll be there, I think, seven performances there, and that's the only place where we charge. That's because we need to raise money and, um, if, to keep our programs going. And then our final is May 28th at New Hope Leeward. Um, and we'll be doing another free performance there. Okay, so that's pretty great. Uh, spread out all through the month of May. Exactly, yes. which happens to be National uh, Foster Care Month. Foster care. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> okay, and um, so Becky and Apu, um, what, what's next for you? Um, actually, Iona is rehearsing right now for their next show, which is Paint by Numbers, which will be at the where the hub is now um, in June. And then after that, I'm going to the spa. <laughs> <laughs> I will be performing in another play called Happily Ever After. At, um, it's with Manoa Valley Theater. And then I will also be taking a trip in August. My little sister is getting married. So. I wrote a song for her. 
Oh, oh wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So um, the best way um, for people to um, find out more, again, is your Facebook page or mm -hmm. your our website, website yeah. www.playbuilders.org, or you can also go to the Arts of Mark's Garage um, uh, website, um, and there'll be dates and things there. And to purchase tickets for the Arts of Mark's Garage is to go to our website or go to Eventbrite. Eventbrite, great. Mm -hmm. Well, thank all of you for coming and being my guest today. I, and I will see you again Sunday at 6.30 <laughs> at Calvary by the Sea. Thank, thank you. you for having us on the show. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, Aloha. Thank you. Mahalo.